This podcast is brought to you by the following sponsors. Why don't you sponsors. go like this and have lightning come from your hands? <sighs> yeah. I'll just do this. Effects. Finishers MMA is located at 3761 Nicholas Street in Easton, PA, Lehigh Valley's home for 10th Planet Jiu-Jitsu. The amount of people that they have over there instructing is insane. They have J.M. Holland, John Thor Blanks opening up 10th Planet Allentown, Zach Meslany, uh, Grace Gundrum. It is elite teaching over there. They teach self-defense, no-gi jiu-jitsu, and kickboxing. They have a kids' martial arts program that is building and growing, and Grace is teaching every single kid's class. Get over there. They are the biggest killers in the game. That's 3761 Nicholas Street in Easton, PA. Do you have anything to interject? <laughs> you didn't let me talk. I don't know. No. I, I've been like, trying to get quicker on that. Um yeah. But uh, yeah, they um, they have multiple schools, and uh, it's www.finishersmma.com. That has their schedule on there, and it has when they rotate everything. And they have evening classes because if you work and you can't get there, they even have I think an eight o'clock class on Wednesday. Um, the thing I like the best is that they treat people with respect. It's not like one of those weird places you go and they talk down to you and. You know, like, like I'm a big bad sensei kind of crap. No, not at all. They're super cool guys. Everybody that goes there is nice. Everybody's friendly. It's just a wonderful place to go and learn jujitsu. Wonderful place to go learn choke people. Yeah. Let's go choke some people. Um, every time I've been over there, and I get a little intimidated sometimes going into classes like that, even like going to the gym or like the Y, uh, I get a little uncomfortable. And it's they, they make you feel at home there. Uh, super professional. The guys have been doing it for a while. Zach, JM, and Thor all have their black belts. So, and they have uh, crazy top-notch equipment. Everything is yeah. awesome. It's not some... Yep. Every now and then they do... Awesome. Uh, it's an awesome place. Seminars and stuff there, too. So check it out. It's finishersmma.com, and uh, they are located at 3761 Nicholas Street in Easton, PA. Their social media is everywhere, so you can go find them. And thank you guys for being a sponsor. <laughs> Taylor Edge Wood Company. Drew Hoagland. They make handmade and local crafting and bringing you gorgeous custom wood design. If you're looking for a custom table, nightstand, countertop, and more, they can help you. Drew made this table and that desk. A lot yes. of people always have asked us who did this, and it was Taylor Edge Wood Company. Their social media you can find is Taylor Edge Wood Co. on Facebook and Instagram. Instagram has a lot of the pictures and stuff. That's the best place to follow them. They just got the website up. It should be running by the time this airs, but that's TaylorEdgeWoodCo.com, and he's going to have uh, cutting boards on there. Their t-shirts are really cool. I know they're doing fall shirts for that, and uh, he's just a stand-up guy. He's done nothing but help the show since day one and has really ultimate crafting. Yeah. If you're looking to get something different for your home and you don't want to have the same boring home with the same boring box box store, you know, stupid tables that are particle board that are wrapped in crappy vinyl stuff. Check him out. He'll come and give you an estimate, you know, let you pick out whatever you want. He's a crazy nut for uh, black walnut. And he loves the stuff, the smell. He's of it. obsessed he's with crazy. it. Crazy. It's a little, it's a little awkward, but he's, <laughs> he's very, uh, very talented. And uh, yeah, like I said, if you want something custom and nothing says that you're cool, then, I have a damn custom table and you don't. Yeah, and he, uh, you get professional quotes, uh, and he's also got that on the, he's going to be having that on the website yeah. where uh, you'll be able to get quotes off of there. So if you're looking for locally, top locally notch, sourced. yeah, everything. everything's out of Pennsylvania. Yeah, support local people. Yeah, so uh, hit them up. You can hit up Taylor Edge Woodco at gmail.com for any inquiries on what you need. Instagram's a good way to get a hold of him, and uh, he runs it with his wife. So they're super local to us, and they helped us out since the beginning. So please go check them out, and thank you for being a sponsor. All right, our next sponsor is All Valley Rooter and Plumbing. Jared LaBarba. I've been friends with Jared for almost my entire life, and uh, he came down to the studio looking to sponsor, and we had a long conversation, and he wanted help building in the Nazareth area. He has a lot of work in the Lehigh Valley, but he specifically wanted to get into Nazareth, and we have a really big reach in Nazareth. It's not a big place, but we do have bigger reach <laughs> than anyone else here. We, we control the whole We town. own Nazareth. Uh, but Jared 
went through his whole story and told me everything he's doing, and uh, his plumbing is top notch. Yes. They do um, faucet repair, uh, sub pump re- replacement, sink installation, pipe installation, leaks, toilet repair, and more. They have 24 hour service, 365 days a year. They charge by the job, not the hour. All services come with a one year warranty and guarantee. Uh, he's going to be our plumber from now on if we have any problems with uh, the sink and whatnot. Yeah. Uh, having pro- plumbing issues is probably one of the biggest headaches ever. Um, it's one of those things that if something goes bad with your plumbing, it's really bad. There is no minor plumbing issue. And no. it's good to have someone that's local that you can call that you know and say, hey, I really need your help as opposed to some guy that he's going to spend – you know, he's going to take three hours to get there and he's going to show up. He's going to overcharge you. It's just not worth it. Go with a local guy, super professional. He can do everything you really want. He lists a bunch of stuff there, but I'm pretty sure he can do pretty much everything involving plumbing. So I'm just going to call him for everything. So, whatever. yeah. And you have two uh, properties that you can use them for now, too, because you yeah. didn't have a good experience. No, they with were that. horrible. <laughs> I wish you would say who it was. I really hate that. <laughs> His website is allvalleyrooter.net, and that is the place where you're going to find all of the information you need to get a hold of Jared if you have any plumbing issues, or if you're just trying to get quotes for stuff, but they are 365 days a year. They are open 24 hours, and we want to thank him for being uh, one of our first sponsors on the show. It means a lot, and all you Nazareth peeps or anybody in the Lehigh Valley who wants a trusted, reliable, professional plumber, please contact Jared. And our next sponsor is Rips Auto Detail. I love this guy. Go ahead. Uh, one of my favorite guests on the show. Cool. He's a really nice guy. He's a very good DJ also, by the way. Yes. And he's super professional at his job. He's got over 15 years of experience. He is located at 630 North Nelson Street in Allentown, PA. He does paint correction, ceramic coating, interior and Pro Auto Detail. Uh, If you follow him on Rips Auto Detail on Instagram, it's insane what this guy actually does with a car. Um, I am am recommending that you go to Popeye's, which is right up the street, (laughs) and you put fingerprints all over your vehicle, and then you go there, and he will make it perfect again. Yeah, he's got... Um, 15 years of experience. He's got a package for everyone. Uh, what he stressed on the show is that he doesn't just do super high-end vehicles. Yep. He can do anything from if you just have a daily driver and you're just like having a clean car, you can get that done all the way up to getting a boat done. Yeah. Well, it's worth it because um, I had my uh, my SUV detailed last year, actually, um, just because, especially when you live around here with the salt and everything else, if you get a really good detail on it, it actually will keep your car looking better um, than dealing with all the salt because you keep going for car washes and stuff. That's not good. So um, if you get a really good detail on it, it actually will help all that stuff. So it basically winterizes your thing. And plus, if it's when it gets nice out, you just go there and get it, you know, just touched up a little bit, get it, you know, refreshed. And you have a car that doesn't look like you're a slob. You can contact him directly on Instagram, and that's at Rips Auto Detail, or you can call him at 484-553-1366. If you really want to know what this guy does, check out our past podcast with him. It's got a boatload of information. I didn't know, like I knew he was good at what he was doing, and he opened his own business and all that, but to hear the the story of how he got to where he's at yep. and the 15 years experience, he's a super pro. He's a really great guy. Just go check out his stuff at Rips Auto Detail on Instagram, Facebook, and uh, his website is coming soon. So go check him out, and he's one of our first sponsors as well. And we couldn't do the show without all these people, so I want to thank everyone. And uh, shout out to Rips Auto Detail, and yeah. give him a follow. And he gives you a free bucket of chicken. No, he does not. He's from Popeye's, because he does. Put that in he there. He doesn't even like Popeye's. Uh, Rips, you need to give out free chicken. Thank you. Check out what he's doing on social media, and uh, we won't use that part. Uh, <laughs> and then we'll end it with, this is a professional class A operation. Check out the podcast we did with him. Our next sponsor is Luke Delmeyer Custom Knives. Um, if you've ever wanted a custom knife, say a chef knife, say a camp knife, say any kind of cool custom knives, um, I'm sure any of you guys have watched Forge and Fire or whatever, um, this guy actually does that. Um, he makes wonderful, crazy knives. He's leaps and bounds above anybody you're going to have around here. Um, 
he's a good dude. You can contact him and give him basic parameters of what you want to make for our custom knives. He does sell his own knives on his website. Yeah, there's, which a, bu- is, there's a bunch of different knives on the website and Luke, his Instagram as well. Instagram, he puts it up a little bit and he'll say, hey, man, I'm selling this. Um, his website's Um Yeah, I mean, he lists a bunch of stuff. Like I said, you can ask for the custom stuff. He's starting a new line, which you can talk about, of the chef knives. Yeah, the chef knife that uh, he brought over to the studio was incredible because he showed me the demo one that they started with that he made out of a leaf spring, which is insane. But then um, what he handed off to me I immediately just wanted to start yes. <laughs> prepping and cutting onions. You, you, you were trying to. I was excited to cook, yeah, and you, that's what a that's what a chef knife should do. And uh, if you you're just looking, kept telling him you wanted to use it to cut something. I did, and uh, if you're looking like. for a, a chef knife or any sort of custom knives that you would like in your life for whatever reason, this guy, the amount of work that he's putting behind it, the craftsmanship that's behind his actual craft with blacksmithing, the dude's extremely talented, extremely humble, and uh, please go check out his social media, and it's Luke Delmeyer at Instagram. That's where you're going to get a lot of his knives. He's testing the knives. Um, But you forgot the coolest part. What's that? You want to make your own knife? Yeah. He's got classes. Yeah. Oh, that's go. right. That's he right. He has his own classes. You can go there, look like an idiot, because that's what I'll probably look like when I do mine. Um, but you can go there and he offers classes and teaches you how to make a knife. And I think that's awesome because there is no one and nowhere in this area that does that. No. And if you're looking for a custom knife of any range, whether it's uh, something that you're just looking for hiking or if you're looking for a chef knife or you're just looking to collect something as a hobby go check out his social media check out his web page get in touch with him and uh, see which knife is right for you and that's lukedelmeyer.com and uh, thank you for being a sponsor all right episode 22 22 off the rails episode 22 never again radio episode 22 the audio sounds fantastic the audio sounds fantastic this evening. Goddamn professional. The audio sounds fantastic. This is episode three of Off the Rails. Um, we don't have any guests. Waba <laughs> weeba. Oh, well, we, no we, we have to fix the lighting. Yanga yanga. No, what knife? More where else would it be? Oh, a plastic knife? Yeah. I think so. Just get another one out of the the drawer of the fine silverware down here. Yeah. The kitchen island's been working fantastic. I'm excited. I'm excited. The McGregor fight, I'm going to try and get a bartender down here to make mixed drinks for the guests. We have a, a sultry, sultry little devil lined up for that. We'll see if it happens. Who's that? Um... I'd like to leave it anonymous at this point. I don't really remember. Is it a male? I don't remember her name. Ooh, uh, her? <laughs> yeah, that was, she's a good looking girl. Um, she came with one of the regulars last week oh. and um, she put up with us. She didn't leave. Uh, What's up with Brian taking pictures with a model? What do you mean? He was, had a thing on the, the internet with fucking sitting there with some girl eating his food or something and then she's like a legit model. I don't know. What was her name? I don't know. I saw the picture on. Uh, Lady, let me look her up. Talk amongst yourselves. Talk amongst yourselves. Got a lot of positive feedback on the off the rails. Everyone was like, dude, that's how the show used to be. And then I forget how the show used to be because I keep trying to make the show better. And then sometimes when you try and do that, the show changes. So, uh, yeah, we shall see. But I think Brian will come to the 18th. It's the McGregor fight. So I'm excited to do the food. I'm not excited about the fight. It's going to be a good fight. It's a tune-up fucking fight. It's going to be a good fight. It's a tune-up fight. It could go anyway, man. This ain't uh, baseball. No. He can get liver shots, stomach kicks. Maybe, maybe, maybe he could have got uh, fucking Liddell to show up, you know, on his big comeback. No, Chuck is, was retired by Tito. Yeah, well, he was, should have was retired way No, the vodka. Him. Allegedly. 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 No, because I can't fucking find the picture. I'm going to find it. Go ahead. Whatever. Um, 
I wanted to do this off the rails um, because I watched a Netflix documentary called Don't Fuck With Cats. Yeah, you instructed me that I had to watch it. I said, it. you have to watch this. I don't want to talk to you about it until you see it. Um, I tried to get other people to watch it. No one seems Wait, interested in watching it. Before I go it. too far, is he dating somebody? I don't know. I haven't talked to him in a while. <laughs> he could be. No, I don't think he's dating a model. If he is, she's... Do you have a picture of her? I'm looking. There was, it was just not too long ago. It was a picture of him. Hmm. Oh, God, it's your old shit. No, he, he... he. I don't know what he did. He probably unfriended me. Fucking asshole. Oh, I'm seeing his social media. There's no pictures of him with There was girls. a picture of a girl that was eating his food. Oh. And I was like, who is that girl? And apparently, you look on her and she's some model. She's like local. I don't know. It might have been Fessler's girlfriend. Fessler's girlfriend's a model. She comes down here for the fights and stuff. Her name is Allie. She cuts hair and then um, she does all kinds of modeling. She's going to be the girl who I get to uh, give Andy a perm. He Mm. needs like another inch grown on. um, That's the only one I can think of that that he's friends with and like goes to breakfast with. Are they from like Bangor and stuff? Um, No. I think she's from. I don't know. I don't. There was one, and I was like, "Why? How is he hanging out with a mom?" He's a good-looking kid, man. If he had some self-esteem, he'd have a bunch of babies. Maybe he does. He's gonna come back on the off the rails. Maybe I'll bring him on with Dustin. Hendrix is probably busy, so but I'll try and get it. Anyways, he's probably, um, at, he's probably at the CVS getting some uh, beard dye. <laughs> I got that for my. Uh, I know I mustache. Saw it. What did you think of the documentary right out the gate? Um, I first I didn't want to watch it because um, I don't really care about crazy cat people. So, like, was your initial? So you you said all you said was you put you had a thing on on whatever Instagram or whatever one of your things, and you were like. Hey man, I'm watching this. It's amazing. Everybody else watch it. It's don't fuck with cats. And I'm like, all right, so you're watching something stupid. You want other people to suffer while you do it. So I was like, I'm not, I don't really care. And then you said, yo, you have to watch that. And I said, I don't really care about cat people. I think they're fucking crazy. Yeah. So I don't care. And you're like, no, it's not even about cats. And I'm like, all right, I'll watch it. So it kind of starts out. It starts out, out as cats, but then it has nothing to do with cats. It has nothing to do with cats. And then the more, like, if I think if I would watch it again, it would show a lot of holes in the documentary because the first half of the documentary um, is basically, like, we'll get into it, but the first half of the documentary, and then it turns into the second half of the documentary. Yeah. And then what actually, actually happens is the first half of the documentary did not help or change anything at all. No, it just like, it, it just was the beginning. They, they yeah, were, but I'm saying like so what the, that group did d- help didn't help. It just well, they just had a group and they did all this legwork um, and it was so, for nothing. No, so what's bad about Netflix document? What's good is they have a lot of documentaries. What's bad is most of them are completely full of shit. Yeah, and people take them as serious, so they'll learn about like, oh my god, you see a documentary about that? Yeah, it's, it's bullshit. It's yeah. just they, it's so one sided. And I know documentaries are made to be, you know, it's somebody's point of view, but some of them are so bad, like that making a murderer. There's so many things they fucked up in that documentary yeah. that made it seem like those fucking dudes are completely innocent. They're not. No. They're crazy no, fucking no. people that legitimately well, I, well, they did, they did a, animals. They did a second one then, and I didn't even bother. Well, I didn't finish the first one because, like, I, like, I thought this was one of the better Netflix documentaries that they've done since the... Um, since the Stephen Avery one as far yeah. as like production wise and it was like they were feeding you a little bit like yeah. it was done very well to go down a rabbit hole and that's what I liked about this documentary it's not that I don't care that they killed cats it's just like I knew what I was watching and like people were like I can't watch that and I'm like Whoa. well like I said and I, I didn't know exactly where it was going yeah. until the very end when it was just like, yeah, look, he did all this stuff, and then he would watch them. And they and they didn't show the anyone video. who hasn't watched it. They 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 no. did not show any of the videos. No. I started looking them up, and then I was like, I don't want to see that. <laughs> like I was just like, why are you looking it up? No, I mean it was terrible that the guy killed cats or killed kittens. But the whole idea was he was okay. So l- l- let me tell you one extreme thing wrong. What did you think thing? when as soon as they did the vacuum seal thing? 
with the kittens. That he's just looking for attention. Yeah, but were you like, what the fuck? Are, like, because I was just like, I, I thought it was going to be about people who like cats way too much. Like, there's a cat yeah. lady up the street from yeah. my parents' house that, like, she has, like, a cat mailbox. She never yeah. cut the grass. Like, she's yeah. the crazy cat. Crazy she, people. Like, walks her cat in a stroller. Yeah. Like, in a, like, but, I mean, I, I get people do that and why you do that, but, like, she was no, doing it, like, in a, do she that. was doing it in, like, pajamas. Yeah. So like it wasn't like like it was like oh like you there's something going on. Listen, all come or down she would to, come over and be like, just, hey, they just want to be loved. If like she would come over and be like, hey, did you see Twinkles? Like he got out last night. I'm extremely worried. Like you start realizing that their life only revolves so, around their cats. I grew up, you know, li- I, as I got a little older when I was with my mom and we were at a certain place that. The people that owned the house above us that was related to my mom's boyfriend were extremely country. So usually once a week or maybe once every other week, every week, they had these cats because they were barns. Yeah. You know, in your country. And these cats would just keep fucking. And there's literally, <laughs> you go out in the morning and they're like ruining. I hope, I hope I'm going to describe that way once. They are ru- they're <laughs> ruining like all the, the everything, like yeah. digging up everything, ruining everything. Yeah. So like once every week she would go out in, the, in her fucking muumuu. It was really a long fucking shirt with a shotgun and blow him the fuck away. Yeah. And I grew up waking up in the morning going, holy shit, we're under attack. And they look out and there's this old lady blowing fucking cats away with a shotgun. Yeah. Because that's what they do in the farm when things get out of hand. Yeah. So when all this happened, I was like, I don't want to watch something get tortured. Yeah. But I don't really, I don't care that much. Yeah. I don't, but, but I'm going to tell you the exact or the really big, big. I mean, big, what the guy was doing was super fucked well, he's a total, up. He's fucked up. You're not totally fucked listen, up. You're not, no one does that. Like, like when you're young and you have like a worm or something, I remember going like my cousin Randy's. He's like, let's watch what happens if you take a, a like a salt a on night a crawler yeah. and you fucking cut the worm and all of a sudden it grows the fuck back. And he's like, yeah. look at this. Like that, that's yeah. kid being burning, kids. burning ants with but a magnifying glass. Taking a fucking cat. Or like a dog and slitting its fucking throat. No, that's like that. Uh, you're, you're a little fucked up. So, um, you're really fucked yeah. up with what he was doing. Yes, but the problem with the biggest problem with that whole thing. So the girl who looked like a dog, by the way, her face she looked like a pug. Wait, the lady, the main, the main, the main lady. Uh, lady who worked at a casino. Yeah, uh, uh, so what pot, the premise? Body, a body, body rocket, or body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what the premise uh, of it is, if you didn't watch it and you're not going to watch it, is uh, this guy released a video on YouTube and it was called Two Kittens, One Guy." He put two kittens in an airlock bag and then sucked it out with a vacuum and then suffocated them, froze them, and then posted videos of him playing with the dead animals. So then these. There's a couple people who were like, yo, fuck this guy. Yeah. He wait, should wait, go to wait, jail. What did he do with the first one? He was the kittens. I thought it was the two, the two kittens first. I thought two it was one by Two kittens was itself. first. No, it was two kittens okay. in the fucking airbag. Yeah. And then, oh, and then it was uh, the snake. No, there, then there was the fucking bathtub one, yeah, dude. Was, that was oh, the yeah. worst one. So yeah, he took a cat. And he wasn't like taking kittens, like you were saying, like feral cats that are like no, overrunning. No, he was on, he was he on was Craigslist. Goat, yes, he was getting animals from people and then murdering them. Yes, and then he would tape it, tape and it if, to a stick and then drown. Anyone knows this is the first sign of like You're a crazy how a, a serial, like yeah. I follow serial killer stuff, like, mm-hmm. um, like a... Uh, there's pretty a couple much, Netflix pretty much shows. Nine out of ten yeah. of them, that's how they yeah. start out. Yes, they start murdering. And it's usually cats, defenseless animals, yeah. and stuff like that. Or and it's usually when they do, uh, they like cut them open. Yeah, like they want to see what's inside yeah. of them and stuff. Like that's the weird fuck. Yeah, but the biggest. So the girl that looked like a fucking dog. So then these two, the late, the, the people. What they did was yeah, they it? was a body rocking. They wanted to um, body moving because she like the Beastie Boys. Uh, so they wanted yeah. to uh, catch this guy. So they started a chat for him and were like figuring out where this guy was and what they yeah. were doing. So with a bunch it. of computer geeks that don't yeah. have a real life decided they were gonna we're gonna find the who did this. I don't think it's terrible that they did that. I mean, I think it's good that there's people like that, but I think it was also people who well, no, we'll, we'll, don't we'll have get, a we'll lot to, going on we'll, and they we'll, were determined we'll, we'll to do it. We'll get to why I'm so dismissive of them. Okay, now if they were a real group of people and they were doing this and they were actually taking, doing stuff. So the part where her job is she's the technology person at a casino, at a casino yeah. which means she deals with technology and computers and yep. slots, whatever. So and it, there's tons of spoilers in this episode, by the way, if they didn't see it. So no, most people I talk to won't watch okay, it. So anyway, so at one point I thought it'd be more of a buzz going so around no, right so, now. Than so there at is. one point, um, this guy posted a video online of him walking behind this girl in her casino at work. Yes. 
So if you're a technology person at a fucking casino. Oh, no, no, casino, no. He wasn't, she wasn't ahead of him because I thought that too. He just walked and, and did that, but I didn't understand oh, why no, she, she was, didn't. She was in front of him. I don't understand why she didn't just have a security check the cameras. Well, listen. She was, <laughs> no, she was in front of him. He filmed her in front of him. Yeah. So he was right behind her. Yeah. So if you're doing that, you're a technology person, that's your job. Yeah, why wouldn't you go to the casino, which they can do yeah, anything Yeah, they, they left cameras, a lot out. And, and, I, go, and when go, I was hey, pulling up, when I was pulling up the name of this, there was a lot of articles on like the holes and what was left out of that yeah. documentary. Because if you work at a casino, she could. Okay, so I'm going to blame her for somebody else being murdered because. Oh well, no, because they they, they she could have well, went. Hold on, back it up. I'm saying she could have went to the casino because number one, there's signs everywhere, and if you get caught video and like that's a criminal charge. Yes, they could have went to the cops and said, "Listen, here's a video of this guy." Filming me. I got yelled at for filming somebody in the sands. And he yeah. goes, You're not filming, are you? And I go, No. And he goes, Let me see your phone. And I go, No. Walked away. They're yeah. like 20 year old kids who aren't yeah. really. But I'm saying is he, he could have brought up, They could have brought up charges for that's harassment because you can film anybody you want on public streets and whatever. But if it's a private thing and it's labeled that you can't film, now it's a criminal charge. So she yeah, could have had him in jail. You're you're forgetting about what happened before all that. Before all that, what about the the, uh, the they, guy from the news? <laughs> no, the they, dorky <laughs> British guy. Like, oh, you're not him. He's like, no, oh, I no, am no. Him. Before all that, when they just kept when like because they started a group forum. Yes, and they had a chat room, but then they realized the guy who was killed the it. cats was in it. And what the the guy was obsessed with the movie Catch Me If You Can, and he was more obsessed mm -hmm. with uh, the chase of them. Like he was a con artist yeah. and he could get away with it. So he would like play Russian music in the background yeah. of the videos. It, the stuff he was doing was smart. Like I wouldn't. You know what I mean? Like, uh, who would have thought to play Russian music to throw them off the case? I was hoping for more clips of uh, Basic Instinct. That yes, really that was crazy at the end, too. So then, yeah. but before all that, they started, he started leaving them breadcrumbs to di the wrong people. Yeah. And then they got on to that one guy who was from Australia that was a paintball person. Yeah. And they accused him and he didn't do it. And then he, he was, I guess like he had said... He somehow connected himself to the murder and then... Killed himself. Well, no, 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 no. But then they verbally bullied him so much online, he hung himself. Yeah. So, like, the chat group that's trying to stop the guy from committing a murder actually caused one. And then I was just like, what? Like, this is what I'm saying to people where they're like, I'm not watching that about cats. Like, there's so many stupid layers yeah. to this documentary. So the group of people that don't want anyone to kill these cats or anyone to hurt these people killed talk forced not they bullied this guy so much because then there was that other group of like the the badasses that are like we don't put up with nobody messing oh, with no, animals those guys, yeah those guys no they're, they're legit <laughs> i'm not saying they're not but i'm saying when those guys got involved it was a whole nother attitude well, see, of like that, that's, let's not solve the case now let's just fucking let's just kick some fucking yeah, doors well, down well here's the thing if if you were like that guy who was going on and like looking for where the picture was taken. He found it on Google Maps. Yeah. Said, well, there's the apartment. I found it. Then you get a bunch of fucking people. You don't call the cops and tell them, hey, we know this guy lives. They're not going to go there. They have yeah. nothing to go. So you go with a bunch of people. They could have hired a private detective. Listen, you bang on the fucking door. When he opens the door, you have a conversation with him. You don't go like that that fucking reporter from England because they're all a bunch of fucking pussies. That's why I hate <laughs> English people. He's like, hey, is this you? And the guy goes, yeah. Oh, are you? Did you do all these things? And he goes, I, I don't really know. And he's like, Oh, you're not really. And it seemed my like questions? the mom. It seemed like when they started interviewing oh, the mom, the who was a lunatic. Listen, a lunatic. She still had pictures when he was a little boy, and that's yeah. what happens when you're crazy. Because she still the guy sees him was, as this innocent little boy. Yeah. But when they asked her, Hey, did you know all that stuff he did? And she goes, Oh, you mean the stuff about the cats? Yes. So you knew he was killing cats, you fucking weirdo. And then like his and then like his mom was like, Well, first of all, the guy's She lived name, in a house with nothing in it. Do you see that? The guy's name nothing? is Luca Magnata. Yeah, Luca. Magnata. Luca. He, he talked really he was, deep. He talked really oh, low and he's, and he's, he's just like it's listen, much perfection to talk like he's, this. And he's bisexual. That yeah, dude hasn't well, that, seen a <laughs> vagina. In his whole life. But see, he's that's a, the thing, too, is dicks, like... He loves them. So Luca was a down-on-his-luck... Um, he was a down-on-his-luck model, and he wasn't chosen. Uh, I don't, And he did have the look. He did look very Calvin Klein in the 90s. Um, but um, 
he, he failed at it. And then he wanted more attention and he couldn't find attention. So then he started making up, like he would make up rumors about himself or like, like where he, yeah, there he was took like over a, all those profiles. Yeah. But there was a, there was a couple that was like, um, that was murdering people in Canada and yeah. then the wife got off on it. But then everybody found out it was like primal fear yeah. where at the end, everyone was like, Oh my God, the wife was involved yeah, she and was. we let her go. Yeah. And then, so he was telling everyone like making up stories that he was dating her to yeah. get in the news and then he would show up to places and be like news stories, I'm, I'm Luca I'm Luca I'm not dating yeah, her yeah and you ruined my it ruined my life and, and my everyone, career and he's like but so many people are talking Dude. about me and the guy's just like um who yeah he has uh, he had 50 <laughs> it's so good <laughs> he had 55 profiles and he yeah. would have all these pictures of him lavishly living around the world doing these things and he would fucking photoshop his, his picture on everything yeah and then what's crazy is they were like then we finally noticed that these photoshops were bad and then they show the one and i'm like how did you not know immediately yeah, yeah, yeah. that these are bad photoshops like it's just a head like at over one point top. yeah i think it was a black person and he put his white face yeah, on it yeah, you're it like was. oh i couldn't tell and then um yeah. and then so like so then they're trying to figure everything out and then he releases a second video of killing another kitten, which this was probably the part where if you stuck it out and you weren't okay with the first one, the second one was a little bit harder to stomach, but they laid it out perfectly where it was like, it was like the time where you're like, oh, what's going on? Then you forget that this guy is killing cats and he is saying and, that he's going to kill more. And he's setting it up and doing throwbacks to movies yeah. and giving Yeah, like tips. that's the thing too, is like he was like, like his, on his YouTube, like, he only liked Catch Me If You Can. Yeah. And then, like, um, when he did the murder, the second one, he played, like, a Smith song that was a song that was written about two Canadian serial killers. So, like, they were finding yeah. out that, like, it was kind of interesting how deep they actually, yeah. the group was actually getting. But it was really mostly the guy and the girl. And then it's funny at one point, because the girl goes, I don't think I could have done this without you. He and goes, then he, I know. He goes, I know. And then she goes, well, I don't think you would have. And he goes, no, I would have. Yeah. He goes, I definitely would have. Oh, and dead. it was just awkward. And then they ended the scene. Yeah, because I think I think they were trying to mean, like, they yeah, finally like, met, like, was yeah. like a love story. And yeah. I was just like, no, he was just a dick. No, he was a dick. Like, he was just like, no, I would have continued this. And uh, yeah. he's like, you needed me. Like, basically yeah. being like, well, you're a weak woman. Yeah. <laughs> so the second murder of the kitten um, was the hardest to stomach because he took a, a, a rod and then he duct taped a kitten to the rod and then put the cat underwater. And then that's when I knew, okay, this is going to go to somebody being killed because in the opener they start talking about how they find a head at like the Canadian embassy or whatever and then like somebody sent one, another head to a post office so like well, that was after that was after the murder they yeah yeah after the murder he he released a film well no then he, didn't, then he did the third one which was he put a cat down and was playing with it in front of a fucking boa yeah and, and, and then he wanted, he, they filmed the boa oh no there was four because or you know what maybe Three. the other no the fourth was him killing the guy there was a guy who put a kitten in a cage and lit it on fire and that might have been the guy who killed himself yeah and there was a fourth yeah. video but they don't know who it was, who it was yeah but it might have been the guy it, who killed himself he sprayed, yeah he sprayed fucking lighter fluid on the cat and th yeah yes so there was four yeah so awful then, kittens so then the one when it was a human was some dude it was really you know yeah, bless you. It was well fucking, at that well at that point before the human, yeah. they it was still leading up to like they were trying to do it. They were trying to yes. get him in. Then they started finding out who he was. Then yep. they found out who he was. Then they start building a case against him, and then they start contacting the police. Yep. And then nobody would listen. And then was the, the murder, and it was weird watching how he was doing it. And and I didn't put. And then I knew when they interviewed the mom. And she'd show their keychain. It said "Basic Instinct." She's like, "Yeah, he just adored this movie." And they zoomed dude, it, in on it. It and was, I was weird like, because it's it, gonna be something. Dude, to it was. Do with it that. started coming in. It started being like Usual Suspects. And I don't almost. care. That girl, Shannon, Sharon Stone, was one of the hottest fucking. Girls oh my ever. god, yeah, and she All was so movies, provocative back then. Oh, wow. she's saucy. Yeah, <laughs> very kinky. So like, they're playing movies. And I was like, I forget how. Kelly yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which, by the way, there's no nudes. I didn't no, see any no, of those. No. She Just did leave a weird uh, hair clippings and voodoo dolls. She did leave a Christmas present out front, but I was it's I think it's a finger. <sighs> I think she like I don't know where she got it from, but I think it's a finger. Okay. We should have a group. 
yeah, we should start a group to find her. I know people are reaching out and they're concerned about Kelly Pettis, the show stalker, and you can call this number. It's a hotline number for stalking. And if you or any other loved ones are going through what we are here at Never Again Radio, we're gonna uh, we're gonna start helping each other, and uh, we're gonna nip this in the butt. And Kelly, if you're listening, we've had enough. Continue. Send, send more nudes. <laughs> There's no nudes. Um, yeah, usually the stalkers are weirdos. Yeah. She's an attractive woman, so send more. Nudes. But yes. anyway, um, no, it was weird that then he does that thing and they tied it in and I'm like, yeah, once they, because they, they would show you a little bit, like really restricted and you're like, what are you talking? And then they would say, oh, it resembles what she did, Sharon Stone did in Basic Against. Yeah. Then they showed more of the clip and you're like, well, why don't you fucking show that part in the beginning? Yeah. It's, it's really, but I love that. He was when he was finally caught, which we're really twenty three minutes in. We shouldn't say how he got caught. Yet. Well, no, we could rewind it to um, what ended up happening is he graduated from the kittens, and then he moved on to a person, yep. and then um, he was trying to do the like. See, this is the other thing too. Is like he's bisexual, but everything I talk about, he's just with dudes. Yeah. So then, like the other thing too is like he knew he was going to do this, and he started creating like a lot of what he was doing from was like from a movie so like he met a lawyer and he was just like hey he's like you look just like michael douglas yes and then like the guy was like all right so then like which by the way he didn't no he didn't um (laughs) he looked like uh someone who would pick uh cigarette butts out of an ashtray outside of a bar uh down on his luck because his family left him because of alcoholism yes um, and he had wispy, dry, gray hair. He looked nothing like uh, Michael Douglas. No, nothing at all. So, um, what? Is this? what? Oh, gum. Okay, Talk, go ahead. I was looking for that yesterday. Yeah. Um, so, um, he started talking to this lawyer, and he started making up this person's name. I forget the name of it. It was Manny. Like Manny. So he started saying Manny, Manny, Manny Basque, Vasquez or no, Vasquez. No. So or, the, in the movie, it was Manny Vasquez. Yes. But I think he was saying Manny Rodriguez or something like that. Yeah. Like so like he starts telling this lawyer that like he gets the shit kicked out of him, um, that he, he, he was an escort. And then this Manny guy stole him and brought him to like Miami and started forcing him to do things, including these cat killing videos Mm -hmm. so then he tells his mom this so when they interview his mom his mom's like oh well this manny guy was brainwashing him and they were just raping him all Um, the time so why didn't she go to the police yeah well i mean it just she seems like she's the clap the classic case of like hey i ate too many pills i ate too many pills my entire life and now i'm just a weird pill lady she's so removed from reality yes so then, because even at, even at the end, where's his father? Did they ever say anything about his father? They never mentioned him. It's always the father, the father missing. So he starts, um, like just setting up, like yeah, I mean, long play. Yes, long like years, play. years even of the, even the fact that he was saying that this guy was forcing him to do everything, and then yep. he was saying, "Well, if you watch the video, you see me leaving." With a hard drive yes. of the recording that I made. Because I had to because sell it to him. Yeah. To because well, Yeah, that's what it was. It said he was forcing him. He was being brutally raped by this guy and being forced to do stuff and would be passed around this group, which to me, it's like, hello, fun. Sign me and up. Then, <laughs> and, then, um, and then he was also like um, saying, um, what the fuck is it? He was saying that um, that guy made him kill those animals, yeah. and then he was selling that on money, the black yeah. market, and then making money off of it, and then he had to do it. But which, watching the videos, that did not come but, off like that. No, the, like he was enjoying killing yeah. the animals. But here, here's my one of my biggest questions: This guy is going around the world. How the fuck is he paying for anything? I don't know. He doesn't have a job. No, he didn't have a job. Maybe credit cards. I mean, he wasn't getting any gigs from modeling. I don't know. I don't know. Because everything was there, and then unless I don't think they came from money, because she came off as super no, white trash. But that's what I'm saying. So where did all the fucking money come from? Because don't you remember he's pulling money out of the bank? Yeah. When he said you got to sell all your stuff, and how did how did he have fucking money? I don't know. I don't know. 
And I, I won't watch it again because no. there was just so many flaws to it. I'd, I'd actually like want to read some of these articles that like say, but I mean, it was the same thing when they did um, the other one, making a murder with Stephen Avery. Like there was whole websites dedicated to like, that's wrong. This is what happened. Yeah. This is, and I get it. You have to tell a story like, you know, it's, it's all done in the editing. So it's yeah. like, however, the editor and the writers and everything want to do it like you do do want to sell it yeah. like i was hooked i mean i took out the whole cat bullshit and i was like this is a really good documentary it's done very well they left in some things that kind of made it like not funny but like they would leave in stuff that's normally edited out like the guy sat down and like the one guy and he would be like i'm ready i'm ready when you are yeah. and like they would let you kind of see how nerdy the characters yeah. were like they did cool things with the documentary but i love how they sent all the stuff to a police officer a detective and said, "Hey, we know who this guy is. We're doing all this stuff, and they just didn't pay attention to him." No, not at all. They're like, "Yeah." But I mean, also to his defense, what if that guy's solving murders and like all this other kind of shit? And they're like, "Hey, this guy killed a cat on the internet," and, blah, 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 and it's just like, "What? Like, what the fuck are you talking about, yeah, but dude?" You know what? I found. That's why I said they should have looked into a private detective. Yeah, because something for him. They, there was fucking 100 people in the group. Everybody yeah. throwing 10 bucks. Yeah. There was over 3,000 members at one time, if not yeah. more, once that... And the, oh, my God, word body moving, because she's such a, 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 a fan of Beastie Boys. <laughs> Shut up, you geeky fucking lady. And then that's the thing, too, is she wasn't being who she was on the internet. No. Uh, she had a, a picture of... Who the fuck was that girl? Joan Jett. Yeah. <laughs> she didn't look like Joan Jett. Not in the least. No. Nope. It was, nope. Uh, it was good. It, like I said, it, the good thing is... It was only three episodes, three one-hour episodes. Well, see, Matt. So I um, banged those out. Matt Ham watched it, and he was he was like, "Dude, he's like, that's only three hours." Yeah. Because I hit him up, and I was like, "Hey, I got this idea," and then he was like, "I can't talk right now. I'm watching Don't Fuck with Cats." <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, anyone who's watched it, like you know, and then for the people that tell me like. I can't watch that. I'm like, but I know people that told me they couldn't watch that, but then they watched Making a Murderer, and it's like, all right, well, you can watch people get slaughtered, but you can't watch a fucking kitten get killed. Like, yeah. it's a little That's fucking different. I'm not saying that it's it's right to kill fucking animals. No. But it's just like, dude, if you're going to be watching this horse shit all the time, don't fucking tell me that, like, watching a cat die is fucking worse than Listen, watching, you know, there's a funeral. Even if they did do that, you'd get over it. You're fucking, they're trying to make goddamn Mike Vick a coach at the fucking all Star. <laughs> yeah, and he legitimately used animals to fight other animals, and yeah. I, I'm tired of those fucking liberal jackasses that go, "Well, he did his time." All right, let me give you an example. Let's say one of these fucking jackoffs murders one of my family members, and he goes to jail for ten years. You think after ten years I'm going to go, "I forgive you, you did your time"? Yeah. No, I don't. I'm never going to forgive you. It's that ten years is nothing. Yeah, and I they like make animals. it sound like, "Oh, well, he he did his time. We got to forgive." Fuck off. I don't I don't I, don't, I, don't I like animals. That. I like my dog. I've had pets growing up. Sure. I think it's terrible when people do shit like that happened in the documentary, but I wasn't watching a documentary on killing cats. I was watching a documentary Listen, on a, a serial you, killer who's like Okay, so that, started like, like people yeah. were people were there yelling, This is how this starts, we have to stop this and then they well, couldn't. Let, let me give you another example. So these fucking people that don't want to watch the show because they're afraid that it's gonna show a I image of an animal being killed. I bet you all of them watch the fucking Kentucky 500, or Kentucky Derby, and they watch all that shit, right? What happens to those horses when they get injured? When they take, they bring that tent on the fucking thing. What happens to the horse? Well, they bring them out to a they farm. They murder and the motherfucker no, and make glue out of them. No, they yes. give them special apples and oranges. Yes, and but though, all those people dressed they up, go to those, heaven. they probably dress in those fancy hats and all that. We're going to have a Kentucky Derby party. And they all dress up. But then knowing that if something happens to the horse, they murder the fucking thing on the racetrack. Yeah, it's crazy what people put up as blinders yes. and things like that. I, believe that me, I am not fucking pro animal killing like that. I think it's terrible that people do that to pets. I've had cats, I've had dogs, all kinds of shit in our house. We've always grown up with animals. What that guy did is fucking terrible. I think it's awesome. And it's the way he went about it. I th okay. Yeah, and I think it's awesome that they were like, fuck it, let's find this guy. But the, the guy, what what the guy wanted is what they did. Yes. Like so. And then she turned to the camera. Oh, do you feel complicit watching this show? And I'm like, oh, fuck off, you fucking stupid per lady. And then, so then it this does escalate to him brutally mm -hmm. murdering, murdering, um, murdering, murdering uh, a fucking kid. It was like what, like 19 or something Tw in his 20s, 20, maybe. Yeah, yeah. So like that, he oh, then number one that he met off of fucking. 
Craigslist. Craigslist yeah. saying, hey, you want to come over and, and I want to make a movie. Yeah, come, yeah. I want to make a movie. Come to my hotel room. What movie do you think you're going to make there? Um, I've made plenty of movies and none of them turned out in murder. <laughs> but um, like, I felt bad then too because they were like showing the guy's ex-boyfriend and that dude's family. And this is what I'm saying is like, yes, it sucked that those fucking cats died. But they but didn't there talk was about fucking, him at all. Yeah. There was the dude's fuck. It was there, somebody's fucking kid died. Sure. So uh, that's what I kept trying to explain to everyone. I'm like, no, it's not a fucking cat murder show. It's not about cats being murdered. That's how it starts and it escalates and then, through and then, what a serial killer does. So he took this and guy. And I guess there's people who also don't want to watch serial killer shit, but I, I like that okay, stuff. Okay, but he took the guy and chopped him up Psychology. into pieces and put him in the fucking a suitcase. Yeah. And then sent the stuff to the Republican Party and the Liberal Party or you know the Democratic Party in Canada, whatever they are. Yeah. And sent it right to their, to their things and- they went into the room and it looked obviously there's blood everywhere from all the luminol they can yeah. see all that stuff. So then when they find out he's flying to another country, they call and go, "Hey, you need to stop this guy." Oh, oh, and they're just all lackadaisical, like, "Oh, we'll look over the cameras and see if he showed up." Wouldn't it be all hands on deck if you said there's a guy who just flew or isn't a problem? And it was, I think it was country? recently all this happened. I don't know. I didn't look up the dates, but I'm like, this. Well, the other come thing on. too is like he he. It wasn't just he murdered the guy. He murdered the guy. And he cut his his arms, his feet, and his head off. And then he throws all the shit in the trash. So they they find out that it's him, and then they fu- they start looking through footage, and they find that he put this shit yeah. in the trash can. So then they go and search the trash can, and they find a poster, and then they find all this stuff, and they're like, "What the fuck is all this shit?" And then. It starts escalating further, but then I think the group has now connected the police to this Luca guy, so then they call the detective in, and then they now show her the murder that she is now yeah. trying to solve, and it was like this weird, like because this is the compelling stuff to me where it's like- Well, yeah, she said, she's like, like I'm she's used like, to trying to put the pieces together. And she's like, instead, I, I watch what it. happened, and yeah. she's like, there's the poster from the bedroom. Yeah. There's the thing that yeah. he used. So then they go, they like- and it was weird because like the lady was had a tough time talking about it because it was such yeah. a fucked up thing. And then it goes from there to like he starts um so this guy's now like on the lamb. Like and then so they search his apartment and it's they said it smells like chemicals. So then they go back to do it again and they bring like the fucking L- luminol. luminol and they're like, Holy shit, he murdered him here, drug him here, yeah. cut his fucking arms off here, and then he mailed all this shit to all these different things. And then this is the part of the documentary that I thought was weird because now the first part of the documentary and that group and those cat people have no fucking nothing. No. Like so then I was just like, all right, well, all these people did all this shit for nothing. So, so hold on a second. So, when they find a body chopped up in some fucking luggage, and then they find all this bloody stuff and everything. Yeah. I don't know, because it's probably Canada, and they're fucking, like, America light, so we don't really count them out. Right, Bill? Bill Lore. Canadian, <laughs> Canadian light. But, um, at that point... The, if this is America, the whole building would be shut the fuck down. Oh, yeah. No one would leave. Yeah. And they would get a warrant within a minute to say, yeah. we're searching every fucking room. And all they would do the first time they'd walk in it is di- go, boy, this smells like chemicals. It would be shut the fuck down. Yeah, it seemed like- They, they, they and took like, their time. And like, I don't know if that's what they say is left out in a lot of this documentary. Because they really then start- Lackadaisically, like, oh, and then we looked into some stuff. Yeah, because it, like the documentary kind of has some weird things to it where they did make it seem like he was this like con artist, catch me if you can kind of character who like was dodging the police yeah. right at the last minute. It and they were almost like building a mini movie inside the documentary. And then like the more I keep thinking about it, I'm like, I don't know if how much that was like was relaxed or yeah. if they just showed it as relaxed. Because yeah. yeah. that's the thing is you can make it however you want. And then they finally fucking and caught him. How is he getting a fake fucking passport? Yeah. That's what well, I'm the, saying. I, I don't I don't know. But I mean he was a con artist. Like, he was doing weird Connie things. He probably sucked a whole bunch of dicks. Oh, um, for sure. That dude was fucking ski-pulling that son of a bitch. <laughs> Luca, I'm not, I'm not Luca, doing it to the camera because it'll be Luca. In. It's worth watching just to see him go, well, oh, I'm Luca. I'm such a deep voice. Well, yeah. I was hoping they would interview him, and they didn't. No. It was just that one interview he that the got guy what? had. What did he get? He got Ten? life. Did he get life? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, 
Because between the cat and then the fucking, the person, I mean, he's got some pretty hefty fucking charges and then like leaving the country when you have yeah. all that stuff going on. And how he got caught is he was in a uh, cyber cafe. Because he was so on himself. Because he was so full of himself. He so you leave to... it to the fucking Germans that the German guy said, boy, he looks familiar. And then looked it up and shit luck. Yeah. They were doing a training exercise for the police force and he walked out and there was a fucking like a basically like a military truck that had a bunch of people that were training that were doing military or doing police drills and he said, you got to come in here. And all these guys come in a full fucking yeah. camo. It was the fucking bodega guy. Yeah. It was yeah. just some guy in a bodega who fucking caught him. And he was, because he was like doing stuff where he'd get a, so that had he to was be, like getting a hotel room and not staying dude, there. Dude, that had to be like early 2000s. Yeah. Because that, they're like, those are internet cafes that had to be 2000s. Early. Because no one's going to pay to use the internet. When now you can just go on your phone and stand outside a fucking building. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because even when I looked up here, there's a lot of people guessing, like second guessing what happened and like just saying. His mom, and the best is his mom just thinks everybody's picking on him and that he didn't really do anything and that um, they're just blowing everything out of proportion that they just don't understand that, you know, he's had a rough life. And at no at no point did a mom take any kind of. But saying it's an, it was an independent company that made it. Um, I mean, they're doing what good documentaries do they make you question it is it real what's fake you're talking about it i mean like i said nothing's really had steam or um that like people were openly talking about about netflix because i but mean I there's never, always there's always never, downtime with besides netflix you no one's ever talked about it i i talked to a couple of people who watched it and like brought like yeah. when i posted i was watching it people were hitting me up yeah. and being like what the fuck and like the, the, the question yeah. is to everybody goes did you get through it and i'm like yeah yeah, I did. I watched it all in one day because there was people who didn't like who started the documentary out, didn't know what it was about, and then saw a kitten but die, the and they're like, "I'm done." How many of those people that wouldn't watch this saw the Holocaust documentary? I don't know. They're pretty fucking brutal. Yeah, and those are humans. Yeah, but they watch that shit. I don't know, man. It's fucked up. I'm I'm not telling people they're stupid if they don't watch it. I'm just saying. I am. You're <laughs> stupid. Fuck off. I'm just saying. Sometimes uh, I don't like. I was watching it more of like. It was a good documentary. Yeah. It was done very well. It was it up was there with the good. HBO style documentaries. I mean, yeah. some of the time the substance lacked to be whether or not what was really going on, but I, they had me. I watched the whole thing in a day. Sure. It was fucking three well, hours was, of my time. You threatened me with violence. So well, I no, I, I thought it'd be a decent show. I thought if we got it out in time, it would, you know, yeah. it's topical. Who gives a shit? It's like we're just booking yeah. guests coming up. So I was like, fuck it. I'm like, watch. Because I didn't want to talk about it and wanted to see what your take was on it. Because yeah. I knew it would be similar to mine, but at the same time, whatever. So they finally catch the fucking guy at the internet cafe. And then this was the weirdest part is he's very, uh, like he plays very like, um, like defenseless? not there. And, and like, he's very yeah. defenseless, like he's shaking. And, and then he was like, I'm, I'm, cold. I'm cold. And then he's like, can you get me a blanket? But these were things Sharon Stone said yeah. in, because that's and the stuff get, where I was like, yes, this is crazy. Yeah, yeah. Can you get a cigarette? Yeah. He was just, and then he crossed his legs mm -hmm. like Sharon Stone does. And he's just like, can you get me a blanket? And then he he was like saying things from the movie and then I forget who it was. Oh, it was the fucking internet group fucking realized that he was doing shit with yeah. basic instinct. Then they contacted somebody about it and somehow got back to the fucking police and they were like all this shit tied to basic instinct. Yes. And then they start flashing back, which was one of the cooler parts of it is like they show him being like, can I have a blanket? Then they show Sharon Stone yes. asking for a blanket. Then he goes, can I have a cigarette? Then they show Sharon Stone asking not, for a and, cigarette. And not, not him stabbing the person, but the part when she stabbed the well, well, then. Well, Wait, wow. Well, then they show his legs go across, and then they show Sharon Stone crossing her legs, and then they show the opening scene in Basic Instinct where she's fucking this guy, and then it just starts stabbing him with an ice pick. So then they show... But it's the way she did it. Yeah. She's throwing her hair around like and crazy. Then, and then yeah. they show him on top of the murder victim, and he takes a screwdriver and paints it to look yeah. like the weapon from Basic Instinct, puts the poster on the wall that's in the house, yeah. in the room of the Basic Instinct set, and then he fucking murders him the same way it's done in Basic Instinct. Yeah. Then to wrap the whole fucking thing up with a bow, she was blaming this guy Manny, who never existed nope. in the movie, and that's what he did in real life, and he almost got away with it yes. if there wouldn't have been an internet forum yeah. Figuring out what he was doing, the cops would have never on would have never figured any of that well, shit out. Well, he still was going to jail anyway. Yeah, I'm just saying, like, you know, it wasn't like it. All the dots didn't connect, and then like, 
then that was the part where they met up, like the two people finally meet. Because they did a lot of cool stuff too, like where they would be like, they were like the guy was like, and this is what I said, like it was done well. Like the guy was like, I'd be up all night trying to figure it out. So of course they have to recreate those shots. Mm-hmm. So they got him at like a cheesesteak shop with neon and they light yeah. it fucking awesome. And he's there at his computer. He probably never was there. Yeah. And then like when they show her and they show her, like all the shots they did to show them working on things yeah. and building the case, it all looked awesome. Yeah. It there was, The lighting was awesome. It was shot awesome. Like it looked really fucking good. Like, that stuff was really cool. But then they, like, set up a a meet between the two people, and the lady was a little bit, like, frazzled, like... Because at one point, they thought people from the group were going to die because this guy was, like, following her at work and was, like, putting things in the chat group, like, hey, I'm I'm in here, and I know who all of you are. So then they were getting freaked out, and the lady's fucking crying. And then... They finally meet the two main people up in the group that were basically like the fucking the cops in the group. They were the only ones yeah. who were really figuring shit out. And then he sits down and she sits down and she's like, oh, my God, we finally meet. And he was like, yep. And she's like, I couldn't have done this without you. And he goes, oh, I know. I know. And she goes, I, I, I would have given up. And he goes, no, you would have given up. And she goes, I feel the same for you. And he goes, nope. And then she just goes, no, like, I feel like you needed me. And he goes. No, no, I didn't. No, I would have figured it out. <laughs> and then it, then it just, it ends. And it that, ends. And, and I'm sitting in a diner. That's how they, like, it was just, and then I was just like, well, that was fucking weird. Yeah. And then they, like, go on to tell you, and then they, like, interview the mom, and the mom's like, no, Manny brainwashed him. Yeah. Manny brainwashed him. Like, how fucked And the fact that he up. would call his mom, and is she, she, did you notice she covered her ass? Because when she kept saying, oh, you mean about the cats? And then they said, yeah, because they, they kept bringing the back to the cats. Like that lady was already dealing with legal shit about but, the cats. But then they said they were bringing stuff about the murder, and she goes, "Oh no, I heard about all that." And then they cut back to her. I'm like, "Well, if she knew about a fucking murder and didn't report it, she's gonna get in some shit." And then she goes, "Well, he told me that like some things went on. I didn't know any of the details yeah. about the murder." And I'm like, "Oh, that was the other thing. Like he, uh, there were so many like layers. That's what I'm saying. Like if you can get past, they don't show any of the fucking cats die. None no. of the fucking cats get shown dead. Oh, yeah, they, they show do. the yeah, they, do. they show the people's reaction. Well, they don't no, show them dying. No, they show they're, but they're like dead. the yeah. people, they show the people's reaction to watching it. And it, it was it was uncomfortable. But that's the thing is you're supposed to be uncomfortable, man. It's a fucking uncomfortable documentary. Yes. It's why you're going deep into a documentary. I love documentaries like that. And like Jinx, is- Jinx. On HBO about that Robert Durst who got arrested oh, dressed as a yeah. woman up a fucking uh, the fucking yeah. Bethlehem oh, fucking ba- Wegmans or Allentown uh, Wegmans. He was a horrible looking woman. Too. Yeah, yeah, but he was like murdering people and just getting away with it. Like it's and they did a fantastic job on that documentary. Yeah. Whatever happened? Something there was new stories about that after. I don't. I don't. I don't. I think he went to jail, but I don't think he's like in trouble. Oh, yeah. he, he, he own, they, his think, family owns like New was, York. But I think because he admitted to fucking doing it. But what I think they were saying is that whole thing didn't happen the way they said it happened. Yes, and that's the other problem with documentaries is they're selling you a story, and sometimes you know it's like a movie when they're like based on a true story, and then they're like, okay, there was a bobsled team. None of this stuff. happened. None of them were Jamaican. No, yes. they don't have. That. <laughs> no. Or even if it was, they weren't. Um, you know, dancing in unison, making um, songs. making bobsleds out of fucking garbage cans and coconuts. Yes. Like you know, you did a good job, Disney. I enjoyed it. John Candy was great. Yeah, yeah. So all in all, I I thought it was fantastic. I mean, it was a little short for me. I would have liked to have gone a little longer with it because I mean, the Stephen Avery one, the Stephen Avery one was like fucking. It was like ten episodes. And then they did a second documentary on it because it was it buzzed that hard. Yeah. And I thought this was going to buzz that hard. And I think the reason it didn't is because of the fucking kittens. Because of the animals. Yeah. Which is nuts that it didn't matter with people. This is like my point I'm trying to get across. The Stephen Avery one went fucking viral. And everyone's like, holy shit, this guy didn't do it. He did do it. People were murdered horribly yes. in trailers, like with hammers. Yeah. And then everyone, you know, but no one wants to talk about this documentary because three cats were killed. Yes. You know? Like, I'm like... And a dog. I, yeah. And a dog. Oh, that's right. Then the puppy died, too. Yeah. I guess if you are a huge animal lover, it is not for you. Yeah, but you don't see it. <laughs> no. Because I forgot that he did that. And that had something to do with the movie, too. I forgot all about that. Yeah. He just got a puppy online and then fucking, like, killed it. Yeah. And then the weirder part was, is he was such a typical fucking serial killer that... 
he would like he killed that guy and then just like left and like went about his day like nothing yeah, yeah. and then he came back and was just like he wore the guy's shirt yeah how fucking weird is that yeah man the he whole thing was weird bar. and that's what they I'm saying is like they have going in with this fucking poor little Asian boy yeah. They bring him in. He has a shirt. Who's just on. there? He thinks he he's going to just get a fucking good pounding. Yeah, and he yeah, he's just Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's a poor Asian boy. Just looking to get a good pounding. And then uh when he leaves later on, yeah, he has the dude's shirt on and yeah. then he stops to like check his hair and stuff in the mirror and they were trying I think they were trying to make it cool and tying it to like American Psycho. Yes. How, and, but yeah, trust me, that kid is not watching that movie trying to be like American Psycho no, any bit. No, because it was just fucked up. It was just, he didn't care. And it was like, they say that, and I think they psych, like the psychological thing from it is like, there's a part of the brain that is just not active where yeah. like you don't, like the guy, the guy from the mob, the Iceman. Iceman, he's just shut yeah, off. He has yeah. no, no. He has no, like, like there's a part of you that like you have regret, you have remorse. Yeah. You you think about stuff like that. I mean, sometimes nope, I have a hard time going to bed somebody. if I tell my mom to shut up or something. You know what I mean? I Let alone people. Shut up. How dare you? Your mother is a saint. <laughs> I want to have her on the show in January. If she can get down here and her back will be all right. I want to have her on the show. I don't know. My dad won't do it, but my mom will. I'll just like ask her what it was like fucking raising me. <laughs> she's gonna not be. She's gonna be nice about it. No, she'll be honest about it. She was fun. We, uh, I did that. Um, the uh, I went to the Hams uh, ugly sweater Christmas party, and um, last minute. Oh, by the way. I showed my wife that thing, and she just said, <laughs> he looks like a 50-year-old man. And she goes, why does he do that? And I go, well, he's single. And she goes, that's why he's single. <laughs> How dare you? Yeah. I had plenty of women hit me up with that look. Um, I don't think they did. Um, uh, it's one of my favorite things to do. I did it at Tim and Gina's once, and... Um, I won and I got like tickets to go to the movies and I haven't brought that character back since then. And then everybody dresses up for Matt's chair was dressing up. Um, Matt was dressing up. Matt's wife was dressing All up. Right, so there really was a party. Yeah. When you first started, yeah. I saw your mom and I go, is he lying about having a party? He's showing up to his family like that. No, no, they, didn't, you would do they that, didn't care, but they you would do that. I, and I said to somebody later on that, like, I've done so much over the years that there's they are no longer surprised by anything I do. So I came down, I, well, I, I was on the phone with Bridget, and I'm like, I'm in the women's section. I don't understand how the waistlines work because they're not the same as men. And I had to go into the plus size, and then like some women's Ooh, pants didn't big, have- big bone, baby. Some of the women's pants didn't have um, belt loops. It was like stretchy stuff. But I found the outfit I wanted. Like Walmart had it to a T. You just have to go in the women's section. They have so many horrible like substitute teacher outfits, like brown plaid. And so- um, None of the stuff fit correctly, so I was just so hot the entire time. I won. I won for um, tightest sweater. Tightest sweater. Thank you. Um, but I came downstairs, and I was like, I'm ready for the party, because I even like went to Island, and I went in, and I was like, hey, look, I need like non-prescription cheap sunglasses. I have this party, and I'm going for a look. And she's like, what kind of look are you going for? And I'm like, Jeffrey Dahmer, like wire glasses, just terrible keep your kids away from this guy look and they just start laughing they're like we can help you so like they came out and they had like a plastic container of like the nine dollars yeah. glasses and she, we were putting them on they're like no you actually look good in those and then we found the ones that i wore and she was like those are it and then so like i got those and then i went and got just for men and i wanted to dye my mustache just out. for chris <laughs> so Wait, come on we all know your hair isn't jet black who, Chris's? Yeah. I yeah. didn't even know he was doing that. His hair isn't jet black. He's 40 years old. You're telling me there's no I thought breath. his hair was always blonde. His hair is now jet black. I didn't his, notice that. His beard that. is jet black. Oh, it looks completely real. I think Roger and Richard color their beards. Maybe Richard doesn't. I don't know. So I colored my thing in, and I wanted to I love to you, Hendrix. I, loved, I wanted to tape it all and uh, make a video out of it. So um, I you, ended you, up- You know who would do that? Do you know who was Luca Magnati. Magna <laughs> Him? And I was told I'm supposed to talk about that other podcast. One of those fucking assholes. <laughs> the other podcast. You know the one, the uh, Tom's the Tank Engine, that one. I heard they're getting a new show on a different network. Mm. So uh, They're not. <laughs> they're not. You're full of shit. 
Uh, you puma of the fucking sneaker world. That's what they are. <laughs> They're pumas. So, anywho, um, I hate you people. So, anywho, um, we ended up. I ended up coming downstairs, and I was like, "Here's the outfit." And my mom, and my like, dad goes, yeah. "I thought it was going to be worse." And then I go, "Fuck!" And then my mom's just like, "You look terrible, but." you looked worse last time. So I was like, I'm going to cut the sleeves off this. And my dad's like, don't cut the sleeves off that. You actually, it's a nice outfit. And I was like, all right, now I know I have to cut the sleeves off it. So I cut the sleeves off of it and then it made the outfit worse. And then my mom was like, yeah, you look terrible. And then she was like, you look like a a pedophile. And I was like, hold on. I need you to say that again. So like, she doesn't care about getting on film. And then I tell her like, I'm going to put this on the thing. So I made that video and then I showed it to my mom and I put it to Rod Stewart. Um, Passion. It was an album that yes. Cummings turned me on to. It's so good. So uh, I showed it to my mom, and then when it got to the parts that, because she, she taped the part of yeah. my feet up, yeah. and I just had the director, and then I slow mode it, and then when it got to my mom, she's like, "Oh my god!" She's like, "You put this in here," and I was like, "Yeah," and she was laughing her ass off. It was funny. We had a good time. Um, Your mother's a saint. It sucked at the party because I was just fucking hot just sweating the whole time because I had a turtleneck on and then I had like a fucking sweater on top of that and then I had fucking tight stretching pants on. The outfit was uncomfortable. As soon as I got home, I was just like, I was like the Hulk. I was like, get this fucking shit off me. No, I am going to keep it because every time, because every time, because if I would have kept my other outfits, I would have had more stuff to work with. So I actually, like a creep, put everything on one hanger and like hung it up (laughs) in my closet like uh, an outfit for later. But I don't know. It was fun. It was a good weekend. Other than that, the holidays were stupid. I'm not a fan of the holidays. But uh, I don't know. I wanted to just do the show on the cat thing. If anybody wants to watch it, watch it. We didn't ruin it. It's fucking shocking and terrible. And uh, nothing we said is going to take any impact away from uh, watching the documentary. Um, If you haven't watched the documentary, hit me up. But um, I don't know. I just wanted to bang out a show and do this uh, before the new year. And then we just got to uh, start cracking away at guests. And JCE starts in, I think, three weeks. Four weeks. Is that how far out we are from playoffs? Well, no. Today's the last week of... uh, Regular football. Yeah. So it'll be next week. Yeah. All right. We should have everything ready by then. I didn't order the uh, shirts yet for myself and Corey. Oh, yeah. You guys should wear them every episode. We're going to best friends. We're going to be... Dallas Renegades, best friends. Dallas Renegades, sure. being a renegade. That yep. should be the song for you guys. That's horrible. Okay. Yeah, man. I'm going to get over to uh, the Christmas, Finisher's Christmas party at that bar that you love. Yeah, the shitty beer that they're not famous. That, you know. <laughs> hey, let's make a beer. I got an idea. Let's just make fun of half of the country. Ooh. Dickheads. I don't even know if they sell that anymore. Yeah, they do. Oh, they do. I'll get one Every one Eagles fan I know has it. Trust me, they have it. All right, I'm going to head over there. Uh, probably be poisoned by their shit beer. Shit beer. Cool. Um, we got a lot of stuff coming down the pipe this season. Uh, we're going to do more off the rails, less interviewy stuff, do some Skype stuff. Um, it's there are people be fun. we do want to interview. Yeah. There are people, that, serious people I want to interview. Yeah, we're going to make a list. Um, we're going to check it twice. And then going into the new year, we're going to have the double guests. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're just going to start cracking away. So I'm excited yeah. to focus and get some shit done. But thank you for listening. Be safe, drive safe. God bless. Fucking useless, suck a shit. <laughs>